Introduction to Microbiology. This lecture mainly on medical bacteriology. So what's microbiology? Microbiology is the study of microorganisms. So most pathogenic microorganisms are in cellular form or acellular form. The cellular organisms which causes pathogenesis are pathogenic to humans or bacteria, parasites and fungi. Whereas acellular particles which causes infection in humans are virus and prions. So the bacteria are very tiny organism which is not visible to our normal eye. So the bacteria size is 1 micrometer in size which is similar to the eukaryotic mitochondria size. And the smaller than bacteria are uh, viruses and later on protein, lipids and atoms. First type of cells on earth are prokaryotes. The life on earth started uh, 4 billion years ago and the first life on earth are prokaryotic type of life. So up to 2 billion years since the starting of life we have only prokaryotes then there on it shifted to eukaryotic type of cells. To classify the cells on earth in 1980 Woos defined three cellular domains one as a bacteria other one as archaea and the third one as eukarya or eukaryotes. So the three domains archaea bacteria both are prokaryotes and the third domain is eukaryotes. In eukaryotes we have protists. The examples for protists are algae, protozoa, fungi. A lot of fungi are good for humans and very few fungi are pathogenic to humans. Plants, animals. So three domains are archaea, bacteria, eukaryotes. Archaea. Archaea is different from bacteria which is a prokaryotic in nature but different from bacteria. It lives where mostly in harsh environments and nowadays uh, uh, they identify that it is also living in normal environments where the eukaryotic cells uh, exist. So there is no archaeal pathogens or parasitic in nature. And these archaea <coughs> are methanogens. That means they produce methane gas so which is useful for biogas and uh, treating the sewage. So the bacteria, the archaea lives in very harsh environments like hot springs or acid mine drainages high low very low ph areas and this is uh, an archaeal organism which lives in human gut but it is not pathogenic it helps in digestion of food inside the human gut this archaeal organism is methano brevi bacter smithy so bacteria Bacteria are prokaryotic type of cells. So what is prokaryotes? Prokaryotes are the cells with no nuclear membrane and no cellular organelles. And the bacteria lacks sterol in their cell membrane whereas humans will have cholesterol in their cell membrane. The bacteria won't have any sterols in the cell membrane. They have a circular type of DNA whereas the humans have linear type of DNA. The bacteria has ribosomes which is 70s in nature whereas humans 80s in nature. The bacterial normal size is 1 micrometers in size or 1 micron in size. So the difference between archaea and bacteria. So this archaea and bacteria they differ when peptidoglycan structure wise. The peptidoglycan, peptidoglycan of bacteria or cell wall of bacteria is made with muramic acid which is murine in nature that means tough murine in nature whereas archaea bacteria they can serve pseudo murine in nature not exactly like peptidoglycan of bacteria no muramic acid and the bacteria and archaea are differs with RNA sequences 16 years RNA sequence even so that's why they are present in two domains. So the major differences between three domains eukaryotes bacteria and archaea are cellular configuration the eukaryotes have eukaryotic type of cells 
whereas bacteria and archaea they have prokaryotic type of cells where there is no nuclear membrane and the nucleic acid is spread all over the cytoplasm and no cellular organelles whereas eukaryotic they will have a well defined nucleus with nuclear membrane and membrane bounded organelles nuclear membrane present absent for bacteria and archaea chromosome nature linear whereas bacteria and archaea they are circular cell membrane consists of sterols whereas bacteria and archaea they won't have a sterols in the cell membrane the ribosomes are ats in nature whereas bacteria and archaea are 70s in nature whereas eukaryotes <coughs> will have cellular organelles like mitochondria they will have endoplasmic reticulum rough and um, golgi apparatus so present some membrane bounded organelles whereas bacteria and archaea the membrane bounded organelles are absent and the amino acid initiating protein synthesis is through methionine in eukaryotes whereas in bacteria it is with the n formal methionine whereas archaea it is same as uh, the eukaryotes methionine so to classify bacteria there are 24 phylums of bacteria to classify this bacteria in 2001 a, a scientist called Burgess he organized the taxonomical classification for bacteria which we used to call it as Burgess manual of systemic bacteriology and in, according to this classification for example if you take uh, Estesia coli E. coli which is the most common urinary tract infecting organism in females so if you want to classify the E. coli, so the domain of E. coli is bacteria. So it comes under bacterial domain, that is prokaryotic type of cells. Coming to the phylum, it is proteobacteria. Coming to the class, it is gamma proteobacteria, order enterobacterials, family enterobacteriaceae, genus Eustachia, and the species is E. coli, Eustachia coli. So coming to history, in 1665, Robert Hooke first observed the cells in plants. So he used to call it as little boxes and later on it is defined as cells. And he observed all these plant cells with 20x magnification. And he used very small simple magnifying glasses to observe the cells. And he is the first person who suggested that all living things are made of cells. In 1665, Robert Hooke was the first person to observe the cells. And it is the microscope used by Robert Hooke in 1665. And he wrote a book, Micrographia. So by reading this Micrographia, there is one person who got inspired to observe the tiny organisms, tiny parts, tiny structures. <clears throat> so that person is Anthony von Leeuwenhoek who is a Dutch scientist and he inspired he got inspiration by reading this book which is written by Robert Hook R. Hook so he is the Anthony von Leeuwenhoek so he used he first started using this microscope tiny lizard microscope where this is the lens area and he used to keep this specimen here and he used to observe through this lens and he observed bacteria protozoa sperm cells blood cells and microscopic worms this is the book that was written by anthony von leeuwenhoek he's a dutch scientist works in a glass factory so the next person who developed microbiology so he is Louis Pasteur he is the father of microbiology he is the first person who proposed the germ theory so the germ theory is nothing but any infection or disease is caused by some kind of microorganism that is called as germ he first proposed it and later on it was approved by his associate Robert Koch so Louis Pasteur explained about fermentation he explained about the pasteurization to prevent the spoilage of uh, wine milk and he developed a vaccine for rabies robert Koch. so robert Koch is the first person 
who proved the germ theory which was proposed by Louis Pasteur and he created postulates so next slide we are going to discuss about the postulates of Robert Koch so Robert Koch identified anthrax tubercular organisms color organisms he is the first person who developed microbiological media the media where we can grow the bacteria outside of the host he also developed steak plates for pew culture for extracting the exact organism the pure organism he develops the steak plate type of culture coach postulates there are four coach coach postulates which was defined by robert coach so according to it the specific microorganisms is present in all cases of the disease that means whenever there is a lesion in that lesion the, the lesion causing organism has to be present in that lesion and according to the second postulate the organism can be obtained in pure culture outside of the host so whatever the organism that is present in that lesion it need to be extracted isolated and it need to be cultured outside of the host as a pure culture so third point organism when re-inoculated into a host causes the same symptoms so the cultured organism the organism which is grown on the culture media whenever it is inoculated in an experimental animal so it needs to produce the same type of symptoms and same type of lesions in that experimental animal and the fourth postulate is organism can be isolated in pure culture from experimental infected hosts so the organism which causes the symptoms in experimental animal it has to be isolated and it need to grow in the outside culture media again so according to this four postulates he proved the germ theory that germs causes disease so for every bacteria there are few things that are required for their replication for their survival one 